Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome. Happy Sunday. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Once again, welcome everyone online as well. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. Yes, we do, Lord. I want to see you. Come on, sing it out in the eyes of my heart. Now open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Now open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. I want to Let's sing that out again. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Yes, I want to see. To see you high lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I lift it up, high and lift it up, shining in the light of the glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to sing it out. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Yes, we do. I want to see. Oh, see it out, church. Open the eyes of my heart. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you, to see you high lifted up, and to see you high and lifted up, and shining in the light of the glory, and pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, holy, oh, I lift it up, high and lifted up, and shining in the light of the Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Oh, see, He is holy. He is holy, holy, holy. Yes, you are, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Father, you are holy, holy, holy. I want to see. Oh, sing, you are worthy this morning. You are worthy, worthy. Worthy, 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 Jesus, you are 
Jesus, you're worthy, worthy, worthy. I want to see you. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. Last time. I want to see you. I want to see you. Amen. Give him praise this morning. Yes, Lord. Amen. And Father, we do. We want to see you, Lord God. We want an encounter, Lord, in our hearts with you this morning. Draw us closer to you, Lord, in our fellowship with you, in your word, in our fellowship with one another. And Father, we are careful to give you all the glory and the honor you deserve because you are worthy. And so, Father God, thank you for bringing us here safely. May you be blessed in our worship unto you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we all say, Amen. Let's give God another hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship God and sing a new song. Amen. 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 There is a place. Let's sing it out. Seek a spirit, the change in his presence, touched by his breath. There is a sign, I hear it all around. The worship is rising, people crying out. I want to sing a new song we shout it out louder than before let the whole earth see the whole earth see it's a song of praise a song for all of the reading let the whole earth song of praise, a song for all of the region. Let the whole earth see, yes we love, the whole earth see, oh, see. hallelujah, hallelujah,
gonna sing a new song Shout it out loud and let it be for Let the whole earth see The whole earth see It's a song of praise A song for all of the region Let the whole earth see sing a new song of praise this morning because his mercy is new every day amen church let our praise and our worship be brand new today unto the king for he is worthy thanksgiving father god we just want to tell you that we love you i'm so thankful Lord, for who you are to you to worship him truly
Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we love you. You are the word of our hearts and God. Jesus, we love you. Yes. Jesus, we love you. And oh, how mind and our strength. We love you so much, Jesus. Sing that with our voice again, church. Jesus, we love you. Tell it to the Lord this morning. Let's sing. Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we love you. You are the Father, you are so good, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, today, uh, today is Valentine's Day. The world celebrates it from a worldly perspective, giving gifts conditionally, Lord God. But Father, we're reminded today as people of God that your love is the greatest. Amen. Unconditional love. Yes, Lord. Even when we were sinful, Lord, deserve death, hell eternal. You loved us. You so loved the world that you sent your one and only begotten son that whosoever will believe and call upon your name will be saved. And Father, we praise you because of that love this morning that saves us, that changes us, and that delivers us from all sin and shame. That's why we sing, we love you this morning. So Father, Continue to be blessed in everything that we do and say. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, in all of God's people said, amen. 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 Let's give God another hand of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thankful for his love. Amen. His great, unconditional love, limitless, powerful. And as we continue in the time of worship this morning, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. Those that are worshiping online, you can give at the website. But let us continue to worship, remembering, celebrating the love that God has given us. Amen. As, as, as followers and believers of God, man, I'm so thankful. And I know you are thankful too for his love. So let's worship as we receive our tithes and offerings.
Christ who lives within me. I thank the Lord. Cause I thank the Lord for saving my soul. He took my death and paid it in full. And now I am free from the chains of sin. No longer I, no longer I, no longer I, no longer I who lives, Christ who lives within me. that again. No longer I. No longer I. Amen. No longer I. No longer I who lives. Christ who lives within me. No longer I. No longer I. No longer I. And no longer I who lives, Christ who lives within me. Amen. Give him praise this morning. Amen. Father, we look to you and we want to thank you, Father God, for all the many blessings, Father, that you keep bestowing in our lives, Lord. Your word says that you... Um, Press down, shake it together, and running over, Lord. There have been times in our life when we have lacked, Father, and we've continued to have faith in you. And it's amazing what you have done in abundance and overflowing, uh, Lord God, in our lives, Lord. And we acknowledge those times, Father, where we now we have food over our head, um, over on our tables, a roof over our head, Lord. We are not lacking, Lord God. And we are grateful, we are thankful to you, Father God. And we continue to look forward, we look forward in faith, Lord God, as you keep adding to, to, to our lives and to our families, Lord Jesus, that we are faithful in doing our part, Father God, in, in increasing your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Bless um, the church staff, Father God, and all the decisions that they make, Father God. And we know and we know that we want to deliver the gospel just to uh, point them to you, our Savior, Lord, in Jesus Christ, the lover of our heart, Lord God, and of our families, Lord. We're grateful to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. And um, we're, we're so grateful for the word today, right? So let's give the word of God a hand in our pastor, David Foje. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Welcome, everyone, here in the house and online. God is good. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. We're going to continue our studies in the book of Nehemiah. If you have your phone, just go ahead and log on to the Bible app, Nehemiah chapter 4. God is faithful, and as uh, I mentioned earlier, and as we all know, today is a day where we celebrate and love one another, um, but we do that every day as believers, amen? We love because God has loved us first. We forgive because we know that he has forgiven us, and what a day to just be reminded, even much more, with uh, flowers or candies or whatever it may be, or just good deeds, just be nice. Just be nice today, right? <laughs> Just be kind. As Galatians 5 would say, let the fruit of the Spirit, every single one of them, show today. Patience, long-suffering, whatever it may be. As Sister Issa said, whatever you are lacking that you don't usually do, do that even more today. If you uh, are not patient, be patient even more today. 
And, and I trust the Lord will continue to bless you with more patience and long-suffering all the days of your life. Nehemiah chapter 4, as we continue on. Last week we were, or the week before, Pastor was in John 12 uh, last week speaking on lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. The week before that we were talking in chapter 3. It is better building together. We are not alone. You are not alone. Because God is ultimately with you, walking with you, side by side. But also to know that the family of God is with you, that you are not alone. We are praying for you, and I, I thank you for your prayers, for me, my family, for the church here, for our purpose here in Watts. Amen? So we need one another, and it's better for us to walk and journey in this life together. There is no such thing as a solo, lone ranger Christian. No such thing. We need each other. So today as we look into Nehemiah chapter 4, the, the title of my message is, Who is speaking into your life? Or what is speaking into your life? Somebody may be speaking into your life, whether it's good or negative things. Or perhaps in, in the day that we live in today, it is a what? It is a device that is influencing and speaking into our lives. It may be your phone. You may be spending more time on your phone. It may be your TV. Spending more time on the TV. Binge watching. And I looked up the word binge this week, and it just says to be lost and drunken in something. And are we lost and drunken in the things of this world no, God wants us to be lost and, and sober-minded in the things of him. Amen? Filled with the Holy Spirit, as Ephesians would remind us. So as we look into our text today, before we do that, let me open in a word of prayer and give thanks to God for our time together. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you once again. We love you so much as we just sang with all of our hearts, not because of the things you do. Father, we thank you for your great, mighty hand. We thank you for your provision, your protection. Thank you for putting food on our table, as Sister Issa said, clothes on our back and a roof over our head. But we thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. Oh, God, sovereign, mighty, great and awesome. And as we read your word today, we'll see your greatness your awesome and amazing power. So, Father God, we thank you once again. Go before us, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds. Draw us near and closer to you, to your great love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we all said, amen. Amen. Let's open reading the first three verses, verses 1 to 3. It says, but it so happened when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall. Remember, Sanballat is one of the governors that governs Samaria nearby. And here he is again showing up. We'll see him throughout scripture in Nehemiah. But he hears something that he's heard before, but he even hears it now. These guys are pretty serious. They're moving forward with their plans. And it says that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned. No matter what the situation may be, and even as people like Sen Ballad are in your life discouraging and mocking, know that whatever pieces are left in your life, whatever pieces are left in the city to rebuild, use it to rebuild. Look at what he says in verse 3. Are they going to build, rebuild again and use the things that are broken, these heaps of rubbish, these stones that were already burned, usually for builders, when things are broken, the wood is burned, messed up, they're like, throw it in the trash. We don't need it no more. Buy a new material, right? But how many know that God sees beyond the brokenness in our lives? 
God sees beyond the burning of your life, in the areas of your life that are condemned by the world, perhaps even by family, close people in your life. This morning, be encouraged to know that God sees the brokenness, the hurt, every area that have, has been ca uh, called condemned in your life. Know that God can use it, rebuild it, and use it for his great and wonderful purpose. Amen? Amen. Don't let the enemy or the voice of the enemy discourage you. Who is who is speaking into your life this morning? Is it people like Sin Ballot? I hope not. I hope it is the voice of God speaking to you, church. Amen. So easy at times where we can so fall into the deceptions of this world and the standards of this world. But know that God can receive you and call you to his own and use you, redeem you, and revive you once again for his great work. Know that, church. Amen? Let's continue on. I'm sorry, that was verse 2. Verse 3 here says, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, even if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. This, now this is one of his homies, Tobiah. And look at what he says. Man, they're going to build this wall, but even if a, a cat or a fox barely touches it or hits it, it's going to fall. Those people don't know how to build anything. In other words, they're saying, your God can't do anything with you. Your God doesn't know how to rebuild you. You're so messed up. There is, you might as well just go over the edge. And that is what the enemy wants you to do, right? He wants you to fall into the things that he's speaking into your life to the point to where John 10.10 10 comes to life, the first portion. And he says, he doesn't just come to steal and kill from you. He comes to destroy you destroy you know that the enemy is not trying to be your friend or your homie no his end plan and goal is to see you destroyed church believers followers of christ but i always love quoting this verse because there is a promise in this verse and it says in the latter part but there is life abundant in Christ Jesus, he comes to give you life and life abundantly. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would rather choose life and life abundant in Christ Jesus. Send ballot, Tobiah. I think you guys need Jesus. Hallelujah. I think all of your lives Amen. you've been told that you were some bad dudes, some strong guys causing fear into people. But also God can change people like that as well. Amen? God can do anything. Verse 4 to 5. Let's read together. Hear, O our God. And this is where Nehemiah prays. He prays and he says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders as people and as the world seems to come against you, church. Pray. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah, look at what Nehemiah does. Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at in every side. The enemy is getting closer to me, discouraging me. But what is, the la what is the last thing we resort to sometimes? It is prayer. The first thing we want to do in our flesh is all, all of a sudden, immediately, we want revenge. We want to call the police. We want to call the lawyers. And all those, those things are great. Those things are within the law to call for, for order. But what are we encouraged and reminded today? What is we see here in verses 4 and 5? Nehemiah turns to pray. Amen. And he prays from a truthful heart. He says, Lord, we're despised. 
we're mocked, we're hurt in every way. And he says, turn the reproach on their heads, put it back on them, Tobiah and Sanballat and the people who dislike us and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Take them away to a place where they don't deserve. This is his heart crying out to God. Isn't that how we pray sometimes? We should pray sometimes. Lord, you see my frustrations. Would you just deal with this, these people, what they deserve? Give them what they deserve, Lord. He says, don't cover their iniquity. Don't forget their sins, Lord. Let their sin, don't let their sin be blotted out from you, before you. Know one thing, God knows everything. He will bring justice to those who are evil and wicked on their day. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. And as Nehemiah prays, I love what happens in the next verse. He doesn't just dwell on that. He doesn't just stay there and be hurt. He says he continues on to what build. Verse 6, let's read together. So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. And let's just stop there for a minute. Amen? Prayer. 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 And then the next verse in verse 6, it says, we continued on to work. Before Jesus was crucified, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It talks about this in the New Testament and the Gospels. You can read it in every book, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, specifically in Matthew 26, verse 36. The story of Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prays, Right? He goes with his disciples, and he tells them, pray. I'll be back. I'm going to come back, and please pray for me. But I want you to pray for yourself. And Jesus says, lest you fall into temptation. Now, this is the reason why it's important to pray, family. Jesus goes, comes back, and he finds them sleeping. Can't you just stay up for an hour and pray? <laughs> I, I love my sleep. Don't wake me. I didn't hear my alarm go off. Jesus goes back. Well, pray lest you fall into temptation. He goes and prays, Father, if, 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 if this cup can pass from me, Lord, will you allow it to be? Nevertheless, your will be done. Look at what Jesus says from his heart. Lord, I'm honest with you. I, I really don't want to go through this, but if it's your will, let your will be done. If there's any possible way that this cup would pass for me, will you allow it? But he says, nevertheless, your will be done. Jesus comes back to his disciples, and he says, hey, you guys are still sleeping? I thought you guys were supposed to pray for me and with me. And he says, pray, lest you fall into temptation. Jesus goes back and he prays to the Father, Lord, and at this time, Blood starts to drip from his head because of his care, his concern, and deep sorrow for you and I. And the road he is about to take. And he says the same thing, Father, if this cup can pass from me, nevertheless your will be done. And then he comes back and he finds his disciples sleeping again. And at this time, Jesus says, you know what? Just wake up now. The time is at hand. The enemy is coming for me now. And what does Peter do? We, we don't know who it is until John, John 18, 10, I believe. Yeah, John 18, 10. It tells us in all the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, it doesn't tell us who it is until John. John says, Peter stood up because he hasn't been praying this whole time. And the first thing Peter does is chops off a servant's ear because he's been sleeping. Had he been praying, Lord, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your knowledge lest I fall into temptation. And what Jesus told him came true, right? When we are putting our guard down, not praying to God, 
And the first thing we turn to is our own actions and our own power and strength. We are hurting others. We're chopping off ears, biting nose, you know, biting, chopping legs off and breaking hearts. And that's why God says, pray, pray. And, and, and look at how many times he tells the disciples three times, pray, pray, pray. And all we want to do is punish, 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 and then pray. No. Today, marriage family, marriage po- folks, as we celebrate today, pray, pray, pray Amen. for your marriage. Amen. Parents, pray, pray, pray Amen. for your children. Yes. Church, yes. pray, pray, pray for the, ch- for the nation. Whatever situation it may be, we see here God can use anything. God can restore anything if we would only surrender, humble ourselves, and pray. Amen? Amen? Amen. So as Nehemiah prays, his heart being truthful to God, God, I, I really don't like these guys. Would you just take them and punish them? Take them to a faraway land? Remember their sin? Of course God remembers every sin. He remembers them. But yet, he doesn't hold us to it. He forgives us. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what you will do in the future. Yet, he forgives us as far as the east is to the west. They never meet. They never meet. And so the wrath of God will never come to a completion or fulfillment if you would just surrender your life to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. So in verse 6, Nehemiah, after his prayer, he continues on to do what he's called to do. Church, we are called to continue on. Amen? And not sit where we are in, praying God, Punish them, and I'm not going to do anything else in my life until you do something. <laughs> the life of the Christian is to pray, yes, share your whole heart to, the, to God, and get up and do something. Amen. Get up and forgive. Get up and love. Get up and pray again for your enemies. Get up and do something useful in your life to the Lord. And complete what God has called you to do. And rather than dwelling in the past, or in your current situation, know that God has a great purpose for you in life. And know that God, in all the circumstances that we go through in life, is working it all out. Amen? As we saw in Esther, his sovereign power, his providential power, he will make a way and he will deliver you for his glory and for the good of others. But notice this in verse 6. They got up and built the wall, the entire wall. Amen? And was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Today, church, do you have a mind to work today? And if I would say it in our Tongan uh, slang fob way, do you have a mind to work today? Are you thinking about your future? Are you focused on Jesus? Do you have faith? Do you have hope Do you have love? And as Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, the greatest of these is love. Do you have a love today to continue to build what God has called you to do? Amen, church? Have a heart to work towards the goal and the vision that God has given you. Don't give up. Don't be weary. And I say this in the power of Jesus Christ. Yes, our flesh may fail. Our spirit is willing. But through the power of Jesus, we are able to day by day be given, by, given his portion to complete the wall in our lives. The wall of protection. The wall of provision. But I also want to say this. As we have the mind to work today, to be content in the season that we are in. I can just imagine as people in Nehemiah's time helping the wall, 
Nehemiah, I, I can't believe that we're going to continue to do this. Why are we continuing to build when we have people on all sides? Tobiah and Senvalet here right now mocking us. Telling us that we can't do it. And Nehemiah, as he's trying to be encouraging to the church or to the family and to the people of Israel, he says, hey, get up and build. Be content. And what the Lord has been speaking to me this week is, this is where you need to be, David. Be reminded that I am your God who provides and protects you. Amen. Family of God this morning, he is your God that provides and protects you today. Amen. And whatever situation and season your life may be in, be content and know that God is working it out. Be content in the trials. Be content in the hardship. Even if you're going through a good season right now, be content. Be satisfied and know that God will work it all out and deliver you. For his good works. Deliver you and give you power. Give you strength. Give you wisdom. Whatever it may be that you are lacking today. To fulfill his great work. In other words I want to say. We need you. We need you. Family. Don't think that you are not useful. In the kingdom of God. Be happy. With who you are. Be happy where. You are. Listen here. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 to 21 says this. May the God of peace. Amen. Some of us need peace. The peace of God. In our situation and season. Some of us need the peace of God to be content where we are at. The peace of God who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. That great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This is the God that you and I serve today, family. The God who is all powerful, who raised up his son, Jesus, from the dead. And then Paul's, well, we don't know if Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, but I just automatically go there. But we just say, the writer of Hebrews. I, I'd like to say it is the Apostle Paul. But the writer of Hebrews says that he is our great shepherd the shepherd of the sheep who will keep us in his hand who will protect us with his shade who is our great shepherd and through his blood the everlasting covenant look at what he says make you complete in every good work to do his will working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I say this today, church, in verse 6, that we would have the mind of God to work, to be focused on him, to be content in him. Why? Because he will use all of our situations and seasons in life for his glory. Amen. And it is for him, Paul says, or the writer says, forever and ever. Amen. Is that our life anthem today? At the end of the day, have you done everything that you could to give him glory and say, Lord, to you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Are we content? Do we have the mind to continue on? Do we have the heart, the faith in Christ, the hope of eternal glory? Yes, we do. And yes, you do. If you are a believer in God. Maybe today you're tuning in and you don't have that relationship. Today you can to have that relationship with Jesus. Forever and ever we give him the glory through his power, through his peace, as Hebrews tells us. Amen. Verse 7 and 8, let's read together. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, now we see the Arabs the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry. Look at all the tribes coming together now. Everybody from the north 
the south, the east, the west. It was just two people. Now it's everyone from all sides. And that's who they represent. And all of them, verse 8, conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem. And create confusion. This is what the enemy plans to do. Amen? Identify who our enemy is. It's not your flesh and blood sitting next to you. It is the, en- it is the, it is the enemy, the devil. His name is Satan. Amen. And in verse 7, this is what they're upset about. They're upset because there is things being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed in the wall in the city. They can no longer do their dirty works and their deeds. They can no longer sleep, sneak in the middle of the night into Jerusalem and rob and steal and kill and hurt. And so they become very, very angry. In verse 8, they conspired together. And they came to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says God has not given us a spirit of fear. And as pastor spoke last week about the many demons that overtake our lives, the fear of confusion, the fear of hurt, the fear of everything else going on in this world or what people think of me being validated by others and approved by others rather than looking to God. God, am I living a pleasing life to you? God does not come to confuse, to hurt you. He comes to give you life. And Paul reminds Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? A mind. To think, think it through, pray it through, and know that God will be there to go it through with you for his glory. Spiritual warfare, we see. Not with flesh and blood, as Ephesians 6 tells us, but with the enemy and principalities in the heavenlies. And we overcome that through the power of Jesus Christ, through Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, and by, the, by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death, meaning they gave their lives to God. Lord, whatever my life will complete in you, you can have my life. I'd rather you have it, Lord. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb on the cross, the everlasting covenant, and by the word of our testimony in Christ Jesus. How many of you guys today are are going through a battle today, thinking that it is your flesh and blood, but it is not. It is the enemy that we need to identify. The enemy is mad because you are starting to rebuild things, as verse 7 tells us. You are starting to rebuild your life in Christ Jesus. Maybe you're a new Christian. You gave your life to the Lord and you're just learning things. The Bible says that you're you're just barely drinking the milk. Drinking and, and reading the word of God simply and growing slowly but surely. And people are starting to see the growth in your life and they're starting to mock you. Oh, why do you need Jesus? You don't need Jesus. You need to come over here. Come back to your old life. They are angry at you. They are mocking you, putting you down. And what they want to do is come and cause confusion in your life. But God doesn't plan that for you. And I would encourage you to continue to read the word of God. Not just read it, but study his word. So that Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 would come true in our lives, that we would overcome the enemy not by our own power, but by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? And the word of our testimony, what does that mean? It means that you share the goodness of God, share what God has done in your life so that the enemy would hear you, know that you are for real in your life. The reason why they keep coming back to you, telling you to come 
this way and do these things that you used to do is because they see there is no consistency, there is no realness, authenticity in your walk with Jesus Christ. Today, church, when the enemy sees us, don't give him, don't be discouraged. Continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. Study, read his word, grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. There is promise. There is promise. There is life in Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 9, let's read together. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Nevertheless, regardless of what people may say and do, this is what Nehemiah says, we continued to pray. Amen? Amen. We see the importance of prayer. In spite of, regardless, still, no matter what, when people don't follow or people don't encourage, what do we do? We pray. We pray. We watch. And we act upon the things of God. Pray, watch, and do. He says, we made our prayer to our God. And because of them, because of the enemy, church, listen close, because of what the enemy does, he comes to cause confusion and to bring you death. Because of what he does, what are you going to do? We are going to set watch against them day and night. This is why our guard needs to be up 24-7. Every single day, every second of the day, in your mind, put on the helmet of salvation. Take the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, amen? The sword of the spirit, the shoes of the gospel of peace, ready at all times to preach the gospel. That's why it's important for us to set watch against them, the enemy, day and night. Pray. Nevertheless, watch and do. Amen? More than conquerors, you and I in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 and 39 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, Jesus Christ. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today, family, when you get your gifts, when you're being taken out to a nice place, don't forget the love of God. Don't be separated from his love. Today, when you are going through a valley of decision, a valley of hardship, don't forget the love of God. Nothing can separate us from his love. Amen? Because we are made more than conquerors in Christ Jesus because he loves you and he loves me. Are you thankful this morning for his word, church? Amen? Are you grateful for the God that we serve? Verse 10 Let's read together. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Let's stop there for a minute. Notice what he says here. This is usually in the Hebrew text is a song. It says that it is a song, and in verse 10, it says, Then Judah said the strength of the laborers as they are getting ready to build As they are praying, he says, then Judah said, the strength of the labors is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Can you imagine imagine this being uh, said in a song or being sung? As the enemy is coming near, and as they are building and rebuilding and praising God, all of a sudden they started chanting this phrase here in verse 10, oh, the strength of the labors is failing. I'm looking to my left and I'm looking to my right and I see them stopping and slowing down. They look so downcast and it's discouraged. And all of a sudden, what they start mumbling to themselves becomes a song. And they're getting comfortable with singing this song. Can you imagine verse 10 being put in a song? 
It says, the strength of the labors is failing. You can imagine, you could put your own song. You could even put it in a rap song if you wanted to. And they start singing this. And it becomes a familiar tune. And they start to become comfortable in where they're at. Maybe we need to remind them of what verse 9, Nehemiah says, Nevertheless, we made, we made our prayer to him. And they start to chant this in verse 10. We are failing. There's so much rubbish, we can't build anymore. Is that the song of your life today? I'm failing. There is so much trouble and trash that I can't even, I can't even begin to start rebuilding my life. God, I don't trust in you. I'm failing. But in verse 10, look at what he says, and he starts out with, Then Judah said, Be reminded of who your name is. Judah, your name is praise. Praise to God in the good and bad seasons. Amen. Instead of chanting the negative things, chant out the praises of God in your life every single day. Chant out a psalm of praise. Perhaps chant out Psalms 150. Let everything that has breath praise God. Amen. If you are still building and rebuilding your life, give praise to God that you are still alive today to give him praise. It is not too late to come to Jesus, Judah. Instead of saying, uh, there's so much trouble in my world, be reminded of who you are in Christ Jesus. Your name is Judah. People of Israel, you are Judah. And the word Judah is, let God be praised. Are we praising God? Are we praising God? Of course we're praising God today. This is Valentine's Day. It's a lovely day. It's a happy day. We praise God in the good days. But I want to encourage and challenge you. Are you praising God even in the toughest times of your life? Praise him all day, every day. Verse 11 to 12. Let's read. And our adversary says they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. They, they started to infiltrate even to the Jews. And the Jews began to go up to the people who are working and they start to whisper to these people. Perhaps that's why they got comfortable in verse 10, singing their song. Repeating this phrase that they couldn't do it is because people who the enemy wanted to influence were coming back and telling them, you can't do this. It says 10 times in verse 12, 10 times these people came, their own people within, coming to them. You can't do this. You're a failure. You're a nobody. God doesn't love you. There is no hope for you. Oh, let God bless our minds this morning and our hearts and strengthen us to know that we are God's children. That God loves you. Amen? Amen. This is what the enemy does. We see it all throughout Scripture and all throughout this chapter. He wants to cease what you are building. He wants to destroy you. He's not here to give you promises in life. And then the Jews come and they, dis they, they discourage. They will come upon you and they will destroy you. Be careful for them. Verse 13, therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Verse 14, and I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. See what he does, Nehemiah. As the enemy comes, and even those within, he sees what they're all about, and he starts to position men 
strategically in places if the enemy were to come through the walls that they would be prepared to defend their city prepared to defend their families and look at what he says in verse 13 he places them together with families and their swords their spears and their bows so that we would be able to use the tools that God has given us he says verse 14 and I looked and I arose and I spoke to the leaders of the city and to the rest of the people and he says this again family do not be afraid of them Amen? Don't be afraid. But remember the Lord. Amen. Remember how he is great and how he is awesome. And fight for your brothers and sisters. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters, your wives, and your houses. How will we fight today? We fight by telling them the truth. We fight by sitting them down, praying with them every single night. We fight by sharing the word of God with them. It is something that we try to do every day is read the word of God to our children. Remind them of how good God is. Memorize, cause them to memorize scripture in their lives. Because it is the only thing that will sustain them in life and protect them in life. And if they stray away far, they will remember the words of God. We fight for our brothers and sisters. Stand up for what is truth. Stand up for those who cannot speak or fight for themselves. This is the command that Nehemiah gives his people and that God calls us to do as well. And it starts from the leaders. He speaks to the nobles. Leaders, lead well. Leaders of the church, leaders of your family, leaders of your community. Remember God. Amen? The great and awesome God that we serve. Let's continue on to read verse 15. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. Now, this is the beautiful part of what we just read. It all comes down to this. The, the plot of the enemy is nothing. They're just empty threats, family. It's like a, uh, it's, he, he's like a, a, a roaring lion, the Bible says, with no teeth. He's just, he's not going to bite you. He's just, he's not going to hurt you. They're just empty threats. And Nehemiah tells us here in verse 15, it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us, when their plots were being told to us. And that, God, and that God had brought their plot to nothing. Oh, through the power of God, amen? Not through our power, our wisdom and might. It is through the power of God. God brought their plot to nothing. And they returned to the wall, everyone to his work. Amen. We may be distracted for a moment, but get back to work. Get back in line. And do the will of the Father. Verse 16, it says, So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens, verse 17, loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction, and with the other held a weapon. <laughs> that must have been a cool look. Nehemiah prays. His people are somewhat discouraged. They're all of a sudden chanting songs that they're comfortable with, chanting a negative song. Oh, we can't do this anymore. We're, we're growing weak. There's so much... There's so much rubble, Lord. Where I can't. That's it, folks. Right? Isn't that the phrase of our lives sometimes? That's it. That's it. I'm throwing in the towel. I don't know what else to do. And this coming to this part of Scripture today, as we see Nehemiah, he positions everybody. 
The threats of the enemy are nothing. And now he is telling them, work with your weapon on. Today our weapon is the word of God. Amen? That is what we rely on, is the word of God, the love of God, the peace of God. This is always going to be our first resort is to read the word of God. Turn to the final authority, the ultimate authority, which is the word of God. But this must have been a great look, though, to the enemy this day. Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, Ashdodites coming to confuse and to stop their work with their weapons. Trying to intimidate, intimidate the people of God, right? Ooh, I'm so scared. They got weapons. Let's put our stuff away. Let's stop building. Let's just go into our little hut and just pray. Pray to God. That's what the enemy does. Stop what you're building with your spiritual life. I'm a greater intimidator to you. You're, this, this mountain, this hill in your life is so great that I want you to stop. And Nehemiah says, no. Everyone grouped to their families, leaders protect, workers get back to work, but put to your side your weapon, your bow, your spear, your shields. Hallelujah. And they're walking and they're, they're walking and building the wall, holding the baskets of stones, of concrete, or whatever mix they were using, and holding their side ready to defend at any time. Soldier of Jesus today. Amen. This is a picture of you and I. Pray. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. And as we are acting and building upon the word of God, be ready to defend at all times. Because the enemy is prowling. It's like a roaring lion with no teeth, I might add. <laughs> Looking for you to devour you. Anytime any place in your life. Let's, let's look here, verse 18. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me, the one to sound the alarm. Verse 19. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Verse 20, Where, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Amen. Great encouragement. God will fight for you. Do you believe that this morning? We're defeated because we just believe God is all love and peaceful and just, and he, he won't fight. I don't like the word fight, but he will fight for you. Amen. He will deliver you. He will give you victory in whatever it is. This is the God that we serve. The God is all powerful who rose, who raised up our Lord and Savior Jesus from the dead. This is the God, the creator of heaven and earth. He is the God that will protect and fight for us today and deliver us. I'm encouraged to know that, church. I'm encouraged to know that. He will fight for us. But I love what he says in verse 20. Whenever you hear this trumpet sound, rally to us there. Every Sunday we are rallying. You know that, church. Hallelujah. Every Sunday we are gathering at the sound of the trumpet, the call to praise, the call to worship, the call to study. And to draw closer to Jesus, we are rallying in the sanctuary of God. Wherever you are worshiping from, we are gathering together because we know that God will fight for us. We know that God will give us wisdom in the things that we're about to go through this week. We know that God is going to give us confidence in what we're about to embark on. That is godly. Amen. We know that God will be all in all for us and he will fight for us. So that we would build a wall. This wall that Jerusalem is building is a wall of protection for their city. And the wall that we are building today, family, is a wall of protection for our lives. 
a wall and a city that the Holy Spirit may come and dwell in his holy sanctuary in our hearts. Ephesians tells us that Jesus is the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. And upon this cornerstone, we build this temple. A place where his Holy Spirit would reside, and that is in our hearts. He wants to reside in your heart. Something else is residing there today, and it's maybe it is not the Holy Spirit. And we encounter all the difficulties in life because God has not fully lived in our hearts. So today as we gather and as we rally together, know that God will fight for us. He wants to dwell in our lives. Cause us to go forward and be strong men and women in God. Let's finish up with these last few verses here, verses 21 to 23. It says, so we labored in the work and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. Amen. When we work, we are, we are on guard all the time. Day and night. Verse 22, at the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at night in Jerusalem, that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. Notice he sends the women away because we know in the last chapter, women, daughters, children are part of this work. But he says, women, go rest. But men, men, amen. You stay in the night to be the guard and to work during the day. Kingdom men, we've been taught this last year. We finished our book, but I want to continue to remind and encourage you today. Today, men of God, Faith Vision International men, and every man that is watching today, stand on guard by night. Work by day in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lastly, our verse 23, so neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took off, took them off for washing. So basically what this is, is everyone was allowed to go home. Those, there were some who lived in, in Jericho who had to travel afar. They were allowed to go wherever they came from, take care of things back home, wash your work clothes. Right? And then you can come back and work. But those in leadership, those, the nobles, the men of Nehemiah, Nehemiah himself, I'm not going to change my clothes because I am on duty 24-7. I am the leader. You are the leader, brothers and sisters, of your house. People that you are influencing and inspiring in the things of God. Don't be caught off guard. Put your garments of work on always at all times. And don't let the enemy catch you without your armor on. The Bible says Ephesians, right? Put on the full armor of God. Not just, I don't feel like taking my shield today. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like wearing my shoes today. No, it says put on the full armor of God. Amen? Amen. So when the enemy attacks, we are ready Always, whether it is day or night, we are ready. Amen. Hey, can we give God a hand of praise today? Amen. We serve a great and awesome God. Amen. Who is speaking into your life today? Is it the, the negative Jews who came to remind them, hey, you, you can't do this because they're going to come and they're going to destroy you and they're going to cause you to cease building who is speaking into your life what is speaking into your life amen will, will you put down the the, uh, the the phone or that device and be in god's word for uh, on average you spend five hours a night on uh, on the, on your device or whatever gaming whatever it may be social media can we just like jesus said to his disciples can you just pray for an hour can you just read my word for an hour I promise you, I'll give you satisfaction. I promise you, I'll give you the, the direction and guidance that you've been praying for. The peace, right? Oh, I, I'm, I'm so bogged down with my mind. I can't go to sleep. Jesus is saying, can you just pray for an hour? 
five minutes, ten minutes. <laughs> and I'll give you peace, I promise. And it is true, family. It is true that if you go to bed reading the, the word of God, yeah. you have, you're meditating. The, the, the Bible says meditate on your, be, on your bed. The words of God. The words of God will be flowing through your mind rather than Amen. shooting scenes, adultery scenes, and all these other scenes of the world going and clouding your mind. Yeah. It is truth. It is truth. Yeah. So please, I say to you, church, whatever it is that is speaking and influencing you, let it be the word of God Amen. today. There is nothing that we hold greater in our Christian faith than the word of God. It is the word of God that we will always preach truthfully. Pastor and, and I and all of our leaders, it is strictly from the word of God. Amen. As we close today, can we turn together to Psalm 68? We're going to read verses 1 to 5. Psalms 68, verse 1 to 5. I'll conclude with this. And if you're there, just say amen. amen. And it says, let God arise. Amen. Let him arise in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your relationships, and let his enemies be scattered. That's a song we sing. <laughs> Let those all also who hate him, God, flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. That's, that's our enemies. As we lift God up, amen. This is our theme this year. We're going to lift Jesus up even when people are discouraging as we are building. We're going to lift him up. Hallelujah. And it says they will be driven away like the smoke. And it says as wax melts before the fire so let the wicked perish at the presence of our almighty God Hallelujah. amen but let the righteous be glad that is you and I let us rejoice before our God yes let them rejoice exceedingly abundantly always every single day amen, amen. don't forget Jesus today as you're celebrating your loved one he is the ultimate lover that we must love today. Amen. Amen. Exceedingly high, exalted. It says, sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol means exalt or celebrate or glorify. Him who rides on the clouds. Man, that's a cool God I serve. Man, he surfs and rides the clouds in the heavens. Can you imagine that? And it says, by his name, Yah. Short for Yahweh. In the King James, it says Jah. I love that. And rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless. This is our God. Oh, so great. Amen. He is your father if you don't have an earthly father. He is a father to you. He is your parent. And he says he is the defender of the widows, those that are outcast, forgotten, neglected, whoever you may be, the widow. He is your defender. And he is the God. He is God in his holy habitation. This is his nature, his character, who he is from the beginning to the end. For eternal. A loving God. A God that defends and stands up for righteousness. A God that sees you and hears you and will come down to you. Look at our God that we serve is not just limited to heavenly things. But he says that he loved us so much that he sent his son down to earth to become fully man, yet fully God. To dwell with us. Love us. And yet die for us. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Let this, these scriptures be an encouragement to you today. And may the word of God be the one that speaks into your life every single day. Amen, church? God is so good. Let us pray as we give him all the glory and all the honor. Father, we love you so much. 
We thank you for your word and reminding us today there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. That we must pray, seek you, Lord, seek your voice in our lives. Father God, that we would not be discouraged by what others say or do, what our world may say or do to us, Lord, because we know that you will deliver and give us victory, Father God. But Father, may your strength strengthen us. May your power encourage us through the difficult times in our, in our lives. We thank you for the joyous times. We thank you for it all. Father, may your strength be with us, Lord, when we can't handle or take anything else and go and put, put the, uh, our foot forward and walk daily. Father God, may you be our power and strength. And we are careful to give you all the glory and all the honor today. Speak to us. We ask you and invite you, Holy Spirit, speak into our lives. We allow you. We humble ourselves and surrender to you, Lord God. And it's in your name, Lord, we pray and we say, amen. If you're watching this morning, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, we're always blessed to give this opportunity to anyone, anyone. The Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that Jesus is the Son of God, died for your sin, rose from the dead, you call out his name, it says that you will be saved. Salvation is not through us or, nor, or through any church denomination. It is through Jesus. But we are always blessed to, to take this time and say, if, you, if you've never said these words, whispered these words to Jesus and, and accepted him, we invite you, we'd love to do that. Let's do that this very moment. Just simply say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I am yours. I believe that you are the son of God. You came and you died for my sins. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. And you've ascended into heaven. And today, I call out to you, save me, Jesus. I am yours. I surrender. Have your way in my life. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer today, we are excited. We celebrate with you. Amen. At this moment, we will continue to worship and close out in a song. But if you said that prayer today, let us know how we can continue to pray for you and with you. There is a growing process. There is a growing stage after this. It's called discipleship. If there's any way we can help you, if you don't have a home church, we would love to be that home church for you, be in fellowship with you, and point you to Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you. Let's continue to worship God. We are not afraid. Jesus is with us. He will fight for us. Amen. You believe that? Amen. all stand to our feet. Father, you are so good. We thank you, Jesus. Sing it out with this confidence.
when I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the river, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Amen. Keep the promises. Promises you made. There isn't one that is in there, so I will not lose heart. I will lift my arm and start to sing into the night. My praise will call the sun to rise. Declare the battle word, declare that it is up. When I walk through the waters, I won't be overcome. When I go through the river, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way. When I walk through the water, I won't be overcome. When I go through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Come on, see it out before me, behind me, Lord. Before me and behind me, always beside me, no shadow, no valley, where you won't find me, no, I am not afraid. Before me, behind me, always beside me. God, we thank you, Lord, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord God. When we go through waters or fire, whatever it may be, Lord, you will make a way. You will protect us. And Father God, we see it and we thank you for your scriptures today. Thank you. That Lord God, you will make a way for us. You will fight for us. Yes. Nevertheless, we will pray. We will pray to our God and trust in you, Lord. Father, go before your people today. May your peace, may your grace and your mercy be with each and every one of us. Keep us in your loving arms. Teach us in your Holy Spirit, your word, your ways. And we are careful today to give you all the glory and the honor. 
In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray that we all say, amen and amen. Well, God bless your family. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Have a wonderful day today, and we'll see you soon. God bless. Thank you.